That's the tagline. The judging was off. Yes. No, they were off. What is that? You were off. Yeah, you know, we didn't have no coffee that morning or something. Right. Like our eyes didn't work. No, no, you were off. You well, weren't. I hear it when people don't realize how close of friends we are, I think. <laughs> they, I think they think that um, we're friendly, but don't realize that we're well, friendly. Friend. We know each other. Right, so I'll hear about how bad the judging was, the judging was off, and then I hear about these grand elaborate plots <laughs> to like, rip someone off who was going to get fifth place yeah. instead of sixth place in a local show. A lot of conspiracy theories. Not, not like they were going to be Mr. or Ms. Olympia. <laughs> Like they were about to get fifth or sixth locally in the battle as, on high as if there is a grand conspiracy <laughs> against them. So I hear those stories and they're kind of amusing. <laughs> yeah. Somehow I'm always involved in them. I think they're funny. I don't. <laughs> I, think, I think it's a compliment. When people hate you that much, it's because they're jealous or you're in control to a certain extent. In your case, they're in control, in your honestly. Case it's both. <laughs> they're the ones that are in control. I just judge what they give me. So if they give me a winning body, they get a winning body. They give me a losing body, well, they walk away with a losing body. They're in control, not me. They control their destiny. They don't understand that. Well, they don't want to understand that. They don't want to take responsibility for their own actions. It's an alternative to a treadmill, you know, and it's more fun, yeah, more it's interactive. Um, Why don't you give him the credentials? No, I, I, I'll you, give you. You don't talk about yourself. I'm going to talk I'm about him. Do. World heavyweight kickboxing champ, undefeated in professional boxing. Yeah, I, uh, but, yeah, still undefeated. Yeah. Kickboxing. What was the record? What? Well, you gotta say in, it. In <laughs> kickboxing, I hold three world titles in kickboxing, and I was 7 0 as a pro boxer. But, um, you know, saying you're undefeated, that. If you didn't lose, you're undefeated. Yeah, I know. I'm but 1 0. But I was 7 0. I wasn't 50 0. Floyd Mayweather's undefeated. You could have been 0 7. I could have been 0 7. This is true. I was 7 0 in boxing. Um, and most of my fights were kickboxing fights, actually. My cigar man, this is my cigar man. Yeah, my Cuban connection. Who, oh, Steve? Don't want to tell Steve stories. Don't want to tell you. Can I tell you? No, Steve. Come on, can I tell him the Jerry Cooney story? No. <laughs> All right, so Steve and I are very good friends. Obviously, we're, we're at, we're at a, ironically enough, a, a, a boxing charity auction. A lot of professionals, a lot of amateurs, and uh, a lot of celebrity boxers there as well. And uh, Steve had made eye contact with Jerry Cooney. Jerry Cooney is a local guy who's a Huntington, obviously, you know, professional fighter, did very well when he fought. And he's a big, Jerry's a big dude, like, you know, probably like Steve's height, almost. And uh, everyone in the place is dressed up nicely, suited up. And somehow him and Jerry wind up next to each other. And Jerry's got a cigar in his pocket, and they start talking. And obviously you guys have spent some time with Steve. You know, he doesn't have much of a governor, he kind of goes from zero to a hundred like that. So within a matter of minutes, the two of them are laughing at each other and it turns into ha ha, ha ha, and then Steve goes ha ha, boom, and slaps him. The best part about that, I was actually there. Yeah, it's true. It was so <laughs> awkward and strange. And then Jerry says ha ha, and slaps him. And he starts, like right away slap boxing, and all I swear, I have my head down and go, oh my god. This is going to be so bad so fast because it's not like Jerry Cooney knows Steve. There's no relationship. And Steve certainly doesn't have a governor like we said right, yesterday. Right. So and I think you felt the same way because we were both like... Mm. Here we go. And when, when I think it was a cigar that got knocked out of the Yeah, Jerry Cooney had one yeah. there and Steve smashed it. And Steve says, I'll tell you what. In my gym, I actually have a boxing ring. I'm going to give you my number. I want you to come to my gym. So Jerry says... Great. Actually, no. Steve takes Jerry's number. And Jerry goes to work. Wait, Steve goes, no, 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 no. You're not leaving yet. You better not be lying to me. I'm calling it right now. And he dials a cell number and it rings. Steve verified the whole story it. right yeah. there. Well, he never came, obviously. But it was the funniest part of the whole story was you got a picture of several hundred people in tuxedos watching a fight in the ring. 
and every head turns around to look at these, you know, two six foot six guys slap fighting. No one's even watching a fight in the ring, they're watching Steve and Jerry. And it was, it was that's one of my favorite Steve stories. Bring your shoulders forward a little more, open up your lats. There you go. Now chest up. Like that with your chest up. You see the difference in yes, your I tell you, you want to stand from the back, just like that, okay? I'm Frank Lopez from Miami, Florida. I've been doing nutrition and basically being a competitor for the past 17 years. I'm also, I have my sports medicine degree. You know, I love to compete. My contest history was that of a bodybuilder. I uh, went from Mr. Man, Mr. South Florida to now transitioning to physique where I won the Mr. Southern States in 2014, this past year. And now we're heading into road to the nationals in about a week and a half, two weeks. And that's where we're gonna go for our IFBB pro card. Just keep them nice and loose. With your lats out. Drop your arms, keep your lats out. For a man bodybuilder, it's really the Nationals and the USA. Those are the two, two shows where you get your pro card. And it's, it's the hardest to get a men's bodybuilding card. Relax your chest. Chest up. Chest up high. Okay. You look good. You're doing the Nationals? You don't have a small waist, so you gotta really pull your back out. You know what I mean? To really help give you that V taper. Would you suggest that thing I want you? I suggest you put your lats out as much as you possibly can. Right. But then just try to let your arms relax. Like that. Give you more of a V taper. The other way you kinda of look kinda of like boxing. More narrow. Yes. Like that. And turn around. That's it. We want people to be happy. We don't want people to go away saying the judging sucks. We want them to say, oh, you know what? I came 15th, I need more work. Or I came first and I'm very happy. I came second, I saw where I didn't come. I mean, we don't want to see people upset. We want them happy. We want them to enjoy it. We want them to have a good experience. So, I mean, we want to make it as enjoyable as possible. We don't want, them, we don't want anyone leaving unhappy. But unfortunately, when it's a competition, some people leave unhappy. I mean, look at Kai Green and look at Phil Heath. I mean, Kai Green came second and he was unhappy. Second best in the world. That's the way things are, you know what I mean? It's just competition. You would have told me when I met Kai Green when he was a teenager, was he gonna be runner up Mr. Olympia two years in a row and possibly, you know, win the Olympia? I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, he was, had a great body. I mean, I used to call him Baby Moose because as a teenager, he looked like a man already. I didn't think that. Before Victor won the Nationals, I didn't think he was gonna win the Arnold Classic or, or any of these other shows. Cut because he didn't win the Arnold Classic, the New York Pro or any of these other shows. I, I, just, I mean, I knew they were good, but if you would have told me they would make it, I would have said, I don't know, they could. I wouldn't have been able to guarantee it. Those are two guys that, you know, I mean, I know them since they started, and I didn't know they were gonna make it as far as they made it. Open up your lats with your hands behind your ears. Feel them open. Open them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Almost take, take your hands and put them behind your ears. No, no, one hand behind each ear. Oh, this way. And pull your lats out. You feel you can do that now? Uh, Open up your lats. Bend that leg. And pick that leg up. Uh, and now slam it down. Slam it down. Now pick it back up again. Uh, but control your stomach. 